So now that we've talked about energy of activation, we are ready to go even deeper into some of the theories behind kinetics. And in this case, we're going to be talking about collision theory. And collision theory allows us to come up with the variables that will let us create a rate law expression. So when we write that rate law expression for a given reaction, really what's going on inside of there. And in this case, we're going to be looking at a bimolecular reaction. And what we're going to understand is that really it comes from two uh, molecules colliding together. Many of the ideas that we use to come up with our rate law expression comes from the idea of two molecules combining together. So our rate of our reaction for this bimolecular reaction is related to three things. We're going to list them, and then we're going to go through and talk about some of the details of them. But the first one is, what's the probability of these two molecules colliding with enough energy to get over our energy of activation barrier? So once again, energy of activation is going to be playing a big part in this. Another thing is the number of collisions per unit time. So the more collisions that I have, the more chances I have of getting over this energy barrier. We're increasing the probability here. And then there's this kind of other idea that uh, it's a little bit more theoretical, but the idea is just because two molecules collide doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to react. Many times molecules need to have a proper orientation, and we'll take a closer look at that. So for the first piece, the probability of these two molecules colliding with enough energy to overcome the energy of activation, we're going to find that's equal to uh, E raised to the power of negative Ea over Rt. So in this case, the two main factors are the energy of activation, how big is my barrier, and then temperature, how much energy do the uh, molecules have when they collide. And in this case, R is just our energy R. And so we'll combine all these things together. But in theoretical sense, one of the things we can say is that as the energy of activation increases, this probability will decrease. And so that makes sense. So if I have a larger energy of, act energy of activation, the probability of these two molecules combining with enough energy to overtake that energy of activation, activation is going to become smaller. So that's going to cause my rate to decrease. Likewise, as temperature increases, this probability will also increase. So as temperature increases, the, the molecules have more energy, the better the probability of them colliding with enough energy to get over our energy of activation. So all, as always, remember that temperature is really a measure of the kinetic energy of molecules in either uh, solid, liquid, or gas. And in this case, as the kinetic energy increases, yeah, they're going to collide harder. So that's really what temperature is involved in here. So, um, as we go along with this, we're going to find temperature is uh, directly related to rate. So we'll get to that in a little bit. So the second piece involves the number of collisions that we actually have. And that's going to be equal to some constant called the collision factor. So don't worry about that right now, but it's also going to be equal to the concentration of our reactants. And so this is an idea that we've been building off, especially of, especially of um, rate law expressions that the concentration of our reactants have a direct relationship to our rate. And so now we can kind of see why. As the concentration goes up, we have more molecules. And as we have more molecules, we have more collisions. As we have more collisions, we have more chances to overcome this energy of activation barrier. So this really shows that our concentration of our reactants has a direct effect on our reaction rate. So the orientation is a little bit trickier, and that's just saying that the two molecules, A and this molecule, BC, need to collide in the proper orientation in order for the reaction to occur. So here, let's look at this, this reaction that's going on. A is coming in, reacting with the B side of this molecule, and it's kicking out C. So that means A needs to attack the B side of the molecule in order for a reaction to occur. However, if A comes in on the C side, there's no reaction. So you can see basically what's happening here, but there is this sort of fudge factor that we need to uh, compensate for this idea. Some reactions do, don't care where are, you know, how these two things collide, some reactions do. So there needs to be a piece in our collision theory idea to compensate for that. 
So P here, we're going to be using this as the probability of our uh, two molecules colliding with the correct orientation. And this is a percentage, so P is usually somewhere between 0 and 1. And it's a measure of how difficult it is for these two molecules to um, collide properly. And with this, if I had a P of 0.2, that means uh, roughly 20% of my molecules will collide with the pro proper orientation um, for this reaction to uh, occur. And in general, when we have a single atom, so a first order, say, uh, reaction, then the p-values um, are going to be higher because um, the, the single atoms are spherical, so there's really no orientation value in here. So we get lower p-values when we get to things where two molecules colliding, like a second order reaction. So if we take these three ideas that we had and we combine them together, we get this kind of basic idea that rate is really going to be equal to the concentration of reactants times some other piece here. And it's this other piece that we are going to call K. So K, our rate constant, is determined on some things. It's uh, uh, related to the two constants, the collision factor, and our probability of orientation collision, energy of activation, and temperature. And then remember, R is just a constant here. So the idea is K is related to many different things and that uh, because energy of activation can be variable and temperature can be variable, um, they both have a relationship on K. So K values can change, and we're going to look at that here in just a second. So these three pieces together, so just in the idea, the, the relationship of K with energy of activation and temperature, we are going to take a closer look at this when we um, utilize what's called the Arrhenius equation. So we're going to take this idea that we got from collision theory and then we're going to expand a little bit more in the next video with the Arrhenius equation. But for right now what you need to understand is that rate is equal to the concentration of reactants because the concentration of reactants means more collisions and that um, K, our rate constant, is really related to our energy of activation is kind of the main um, focus here, that the energy of activation is really what we consider to be the main determining factor of K. Large energy of activations, um, small K, small energy of activations, large K, faster reactions. And then also that temperature and energy of activation are the direct factors here. Those are the variables when we determine K. So K can change.